everyone, my name is Reggie and welcome to my channel. Today's video is my most anticipated fall book releases. If you don't know, fall is the biggest push for the publishing industry. There are always so many amazing sounding books that come out in fall and I'm so, so excited to talk to you about the fall releases that I'm excited for today because there are just so many of them and fall is also just like the best in general. Good colors, long sleeves, a little bit cooler, leaves on the ground, pumpkin, fun times, spooktober, all good things. I'm super excited. We're gonna do September releases first. So technically the first day of fall is September 22nd, I believe. However, the pumpkin spice latte has been out. Starbucks has deemed it fall, we're good. The first few books I have on this list actually might be out by the time this video ends up going live. And that's just more exciting for you because that means you can pick up the book now if you want to. The first book I have to talk about today is His Hideous Heart. This is an anthology collection based on Edgar Allan Poe retellings. So there is half of the book has the Edgar Allan Poe original story and then half of the book has the retellings for them. And this just sounds great. I think I'm actually gonna end up reading this in October for Spooktober for the readathon. I think it'll be just this fall vibes perfect. Next up coming out on September 17th is The Liars of Mariposa Island. This is by Jennifer Matu, which I loved her book Moxie, so I'm really excited to read something else by her. This is a story that's slightly hard to explain. I believe this is told in three perspectives as this family goes to this island for the summer. And so we, I believe we have a sister, brother, and mother perspective. And the sister's perspective is um, about her falling in love with this boy and she's there on the island to babysit like some kids for a family or something. Then we have the perspective of the son, her brother, who I think doesn't want to be there, doesn't like the island, wants to go back home to like figure out what's going on with his dad or something like that. And then we have the mother's experience. I think her perspective is told in flashbacks as she was leaving Cuba to come to the United States. So it sounds super fascinating, interesting. I wanna see how these all tie in together. Next up is actually probably the next book I'm going to be reading because I am so incredibly fortunate to have an e-arc of this book and I still cannot believe that is real life. And this is The Water Dancer by Tanashi Coates. I don't know if I said the release date or not, but it comes out September 24th, and I am so, so excited to read this. If you don't know, Tanashi Coates is the National Book Award winner of the book Between the World and Me, which is his memoir, but it's told as like a letter to his son. It's beautifully written. It's incredibly told. And then this February, in February 2019, I got to see Tanashi Coates speak live and it was incredible experience. He's such a smart, well articulated, just brilliant human being. And he put like so many things into perspective for me. He's just so incredible. So I'm so excited to read his fiction debut. But anyways, let's talk about his fiction debut. The Water Dancer is the story of basically enslavement. And it talks about a family who has been separated. I think the mother died, but it does have, from what I can gather, some kind of like supernatural, um, paranormal, magical realism add-in, I guess is the best way I can describe it. Because his mother had some kind of power that when either they were separated or she died, I don't know the specifics of the story yet because I haven't read it, but those powers got passed on to her son, which is, I believe, our main character that we're following. From what I can tell, it's a book that really focuses on the horrors of slavery and enslavement and uh, the generations, how that follows people through the generations and the generational lines. And because I think Tanashi Coates is such a brilliant human being, I'm so excited to read this and I'm so... I'm just, I can't wait to see what this man's brilliant brain can produce. The last September release I have to talk to you about is called The Tenth Girl. This is by Sarah Farring and this comes out on September 24th. This is a gothic psychological thriller and this is about a girl who moves to this boarding school in South America. Legend has it if you go to this location that a curse will be put upon you. But our main character goes anyway because she's escaping a bad situation or something along those lines that she thinks the risk of a curse is worth it. When she gets there and she moves into the house that she's staying in, weird things happen. It's spooky. I think it might be paranormal. There might be ghosts. There might be spirits. Who knows? I'm excited. This seems like a good, again, October read. And since this comes out in September, I'll probably be reading it in October. It just sounds spooky and fun and good. And I'm excited. Let's shift into October where it gets colder and 
more fall and more book releases. Just so, so many. We'll start off on October 1st with the iconic, everybody wants to read it, all consuming Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. So Ninth House follows our main character who gets the opportunity to work at Yale as a person that kind of is like the insider for Secret Society. So I've heard this compared to We Were Villains and to The Secret History. So we'll see how it goes. From what I've heard about this book, it actually sounds to me to be more interesting than The Secret History, which was a book I didn't really like. But I like the concept of it. So I'm interested in exploring that like dark academia setting further. And just putting it out there that I'm not like a Lee Bardugo stan, but like I am a fan of this book and its concept. I'm interested. So next up, also coming out on October 1st, we have Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. Yes, the author of Perks of Being a Wallflower. Yes, this is his first novel since Perks. Yes, I'm excited because it's Stephen Chbosky. However, the concept does actually sound super interesting. This is about a woman and her son and she leaves an abusive relationship, finds a cute small town for them to kind of settle into, and then her son disappears for about six days and when he comes back he's not hurt but he has this voice inside of his head and I'm assuming that that's the imaginary friend. Essentially this voice is telling him that if he doesn't do this thing, I think it's build a treehouse or something silly, then like nothing will be the same. I, I don't know if there's sorts of death or what, but like he just has to do it. This is actually on Goodreads like listed as horror. So I'm super interested in that as well. That aspect really has me fascinated. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really interested in the different scenarios I think this could go. I want to know more about the imaginary friend, what happens if he does or does not build a treehouse. I want to know more about the mom and her backstory. Like Everything about this just kind of fascinates me. Next up, also coming out on October 1st, we have Crier's War by Nina Valera. This is a fascinating sounding fantasy to me, and I'm mostly a contemporary or thriller or like real world setting kind of reader. So for me to be interested in fantasy says a lot, but this one sounds so incredibly good. It has a female female romance, it has hate to love, great things. Basically in this world you have a thought of this war and there is a girl on one side of the war who is now like a slave I assume or some like she was the side of the war that lost and she wants to seek revenge for her families that were hurt for the people that were killed in this war and so she is working her way up the ranks so that she can kill the daughter of the king I believe. Then we have that daughter of the king who is finding out that maybe her father isn't the leader she thinks he is and like I said there's female female romance and there's hate to love so I assume those two find their ways to each other and I'm really interested in seeing how this plays out. This is the first book in a series so hopefully I like the first one so we have a really epic fantastic fantasy series to look forward to over the next couple of years. Then also coming out on October 1st. October 1st is just going to be bad for people's wallets, but I pre-ordered this one because I'm going to a signing for this one. Let's talk about what it is. The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepides. This is a, a beautiful book, first of all. And also, if you don't know, Ruta Sepides is a historical fiction author who writes books typically about things in history that aren't the main thing that is normally talked about. So she has done a couple books um, about World War II, but set, one is set, I believe, in the South, in the US. One is set in like somewhere in Europe that's not normally talked about, I believe. She also has done one about a maritime disaster that is not often talked about. This one though is the one I'm most excited about because it's set in Spain during the Spanish Rebellion and it follows the story of how like Spain was letting these people in, letting tourists in, making it feel like everything is going fine. Like they're trying to up tourism be as a guise. And so this book actually follows a boy who's visiting Spain as like a teenager and he's from Texas and he is a photographer, an aspiring photographer, and he takes a picture of something and sees something he shouldn't. It sounds super fascinating. I'm very interested in seeing how Ruta Sepides takes this. And yeah, I'm just, I love her and I'm really excited to meet her and talk to her about her books and read this. And this is also probably a sneak peek at my October TBR because I've only read one of her books. So I'll probably be reading all of her catalog in October leading up to her signing which is in mid-October and there will be a giveaway for this book in my channel in mid-October if you're interested because like I said I'm gonna go meet her so of course I'm gonna get y'all a signed copy too. The next book also comes out on October 1st. October 1st is gonna be a big day for them bookstores and the library. 
This one is one of my favorite of all fall season, the one I'm most excited for, I should say. And it is a long entitled. This is called 13 Doorways, Wolves Behind Them All. And it's by Lauren Ruby, who's the author of The Go Bone Gap, which I've never read. This is a story of a young girl and her sister who are taken to an orphanage by their father after their mother died. And he left them there just until he could get himself back on his feet so he could take care of them. And then he basically abandons them. I think or something like that somehow they end up out of the orphanage and on their own and so now they're on their own trying to figure out how they're gonna survive and the time this is set is in between the Great Depression and World War II so we're like in that murky area where things are ramping up and getting scarier things are hard already on everyone and it's about this girl and her sister trying to survive the thing that struck me about this synopsis why I immediately put it on my TBR the second I heard about it was just how beautifully crafted this synopsis is. I highly encourage you to go read the Goodreads summary. I'll have it linked down below. I need <laughs> to read this book and I pray that it's as well written as the summary was and that it invokes the emotions this summary did because I was reading the summary just like oh my god and I just I'm so 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 hopefully excited that this is the kind of book that I've been wanting like something dark and gritty and sad and hopeful and just mm, this this is the kind of book I want to read so I'm excited. For Finally we've moved on from October 1st coming out on October 8th we have The Beautiful by Renee Audier which I'm sure you've heard about and is actually the one I'm most excited about on this list. This is set in 1872 in New Orleans and it's the return of vampires. I say return of vampires like the return of literature vampires. They're back and we're ready for them. I've actually sadly heard a lot of people recently DNFing this who had ARC copies. However, that's not dissuading me from my excitement. I'm hopeful that I this is still just my kind of book because like I said, I'm excited for the return of them vampires and I'm excited for them to be good this time. I believe this deals with the thought of like a serial killer and uh, vampires and how that like kind of plays into human fears and uh yeah I'm just fascinated by this however I haven't had good luck with Renee Audier books in the past so I am worried I am hesitant I am nervous but I'm also so excited so hopeful I just mm, I'm this I want it <laughs> I want my hands on this book I want to read it and I want it to be good <laughs> The last October release I have to talk to you about is Twice in a Bloom Loon by Christina Lauren and this comes out on October 22nd. This is about a girl who is an aspiring actress 14 years ago. She fell in love with this guy on this like two week vacation abroad they had and then I assume they broke up. We are now 14 years in the future. She is an aspiring actress and on the set of one of her jobs she runs into that boy from 14 years ago and I think it's called Twice on a Blue Moon because it's a second chance romance. I do have an e-arc of it so that's very exciting and I'm very hopeful that I like it as much as I love the Unhoneymooners which I, I really love. If October's big date was October 1st the November big date is November 5th. Almost everything I'm excited for coming out in November comes out on November 5th, starting with The Toll by Neil Shusterman. This is the third book in the Arc of Assize series, a utopian society in which we have cured all death, we have like basically stopped diseases, there is no reason you will die. So people don't die, however, to combat that, to deal with potentially overpopulation, we have these people called Scythes who go out and glean, which is kill people, to like regulate the population. Toll is the third book in the series. It's the conclusion to the series. It's super hyped on booktube. I don't think it's necessarily quite as good as people make it out to be, but it is very, very good. I really loved the second book more than the first, so I'm hoping that the third book just does the same thing and just ups it again, but we'll see. Also coming out on November 5th, we have another series conclusion. This is Supernova by Marissa Meyer, which is concluding the Renegades trilogy. So the first book was Renegades, the second book was Arch Enemies. I haven't actually read Arch Enemies, so I'll have to read that soon. However, I am still excited for this book. Renegades was a great read. I'm a big fan of Marissa Meyer in general, and Renegades is just kind of up my alley. So this is her first non-like retelling, but this is the story of uh, this society where we have kind of uh, good and evil. We have the renegades and then we have the arch enemies. And so it's basically like superheroes and supervillains because it's a world in which a lot of people do have powers. And so we follow one of our arch enemies, one of the bad guys who her, she lost her parents when uh, she thought the renegades were going to come save her and has since just kind of had a vendetta against them and then we also follow a guy who is in the renegades and thinks they're all great and is kind of brainwashed so you see these two conflicting sides are the renegades all good are the arch enemies all bad it's like a very like simplistic 
like breakdown of good versus evil, but it's fun and enjoyable and superheroes are a great time. Next up, again coming out on November 5th, we have The Guinevere Deception by Kristen White. Kristen White is an author I've had a mm, mixed relationship with, and by mixed I mean I haven't really liked anything she's written, but I haven't like downright hated it. Kristen White often writes a historical, a fictionalized, feminist empowering stories. So this book is no exception to that. This as you can imagine by being called Guinevere, deals with Guinevere from the Arthurian stories. So it's uh, from Guinevere's point of view, uh, going into like try to court King Arthur. I haven't read the full synopsis. I don't want to. That was enough for me. I really like the Arthurian stories. I really like the woman take on it. And I'm hopeful it's good. Next up is one I'm so excited to read again. I'm excited to read all of these, but this one really stands out on the list because this is The Forgotten Girl by India Brown. And if you don't know, India is a booktuber. I love her. She was one of the first channels I subscribed to and I'm so, so excited to read her debut. This is a middle grade book following a young girl who basically stumbles upon a slave graveyard. I think. And I'm so excited to support India. I just, I'm so, mm, I really have good feelings about this book. I think it's going to be great. And not just because India is amazing, but like just the concept sounds so good. Next up coming out on November 5th is Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiavater, which is the first book in the sequel series to the Raven Cycle, which I know you know about, but like, oh my goodness, I still can't believe this is happening. This follows a main character from the Raven Cycle, Ronan, who is a lot of people's favorite. He's actually not my favorite in the Raven Cycle, but it doesn't matter because I'm so, 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 so excited for more of the Raven Boys, basically. It's not more of the Raven Boys, but it is because it's about Ronan anyway. I'm here for it. I honestly don't know anything about Call Down the Hawk other than it's a sequel series to Raven Boys. It's more than one book. I think it's gonna be two and it's about Ronan. I know there's more information out there. I just don't care to know it. I don't know if this is set before, after, during the Raven cycle. I don't know anything. I just, I don't want to. I'm gonna go into a blind and be excited. So don't spoil it for me. But as with every book here, I'll have the synopsis and the Goodreads page linked down below so you can go check it out if you're interested in more details. And now we've come to the last, but certainly not least on this list, also coming out on November 5th. So I think everything I was excited for in November came out on November 5th. Basically my entire November TBR is gonna be this release list, I guess. But anyways, also coming out on November 5th is The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. And whew, I loved The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, but it wasn't like my favorite book of all time. However, this I really think could do it because the plot just sounds like right up my alley. It's a me book if I've ever heard one. So anyways, the plot of this is about a young boy who is in, I believe he's in college. He goes to the library. Long story short, he stumbles across this book and he sees his name in it and his story and things that haven't come to pass in his life yet, but it, it, it's so clearly about him. So he goes on this journey to try to figure out what the heck that means, what's going on, why that's there, everything about it. He has to uncover a set of clues that he, takes him on a journey and a bookish journey story from a kid set in college who doesn't know about his past or something. These are just like so many buzzword items for me. And I do love Aaron Morgenstern's writing and I'm just, I'm here for this. I'm really excited. This is another one that's like the top of my excitement levels list. Those are all of the books I'm excited for coming out in September, October, and November. Otherwise, that is all for today's video. If there's something that I didn't include on this list that you're super excited for that comes out in September, October, or November, let me know in the comments down below. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell notification if you don't wanna miss when I post new videos. You know the drill, you know what to do, and we'll just leave it at that. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.